would be if Spain had the decency to be off the coast of Washington. <laughs> <laughs> he is expecting me to read this in a British accent. <laughs> Instead, I will be reading it rapidly with a cough. <laughs> I'm also cutting their bits. Um, the book is about Sir Richard Francis Burke, who in this timeline is the king's agent, and he's the famous explorer, and his, his masochistic, diminutive friend, Algie Swinburne, and they function as a type of Holmes and Watson. And they've just infiltrated Darkling Towers where they fired a weapon on Lord Oliphant, who has genetically blended himself with a white panther. And Oliphant has set loose uh, the werewolves. The last of the three penny farthings sputtered in the light. The men mounted them, steered out onto the road, and accelerated away in a cloud of steam. Behind them, a snarling loop the roo hurled over the wall followed immediately by the rest of the pack. Bloody hell, cried Travis, looking back. Open your valves, they're fast. What the heck are they? Hungry, shrilled Schwinborn. <laughs> the penny farthings clattered over the uneven surface of the road, rattling the teeth of the three riders. Yelping and growling, and spittle trailing from their distended jaws, the ravening animal men loped along behind, gradually gaining on the machines. Burton, Travis, and Swinburne swept past the corner of the darkening tower's estate and careened onto the Waterford Road. Trees flashed by, stretches of fencing, hedgerows, and beyond them rolling fields, pale in the light of the thin crescent moon. White steam boiled from the vehicles and trailed behind them all the way back to the thicket where Trouts had waited. Beneath the slowly rolling vapor, the loop gurus sprinted after their prey. They were close now. They could smell human flesh. Blast these machines, Burton muttered. They're not fast enough. His jaws snapped together as the big front wheel jerked over a pothole. Trounce, he yelled. Steer in next to algae. The yard man obeyed, though controlling the contraption proved difficult as it bounced over a particularly rough patch of road. A long, drawn-out howl sounded from just behind. Algae, called Burton. Step off your velocipede onto Trounce's. What? cried his two friends. Just do it, man. Swinborn, entirely fearless stood in his stirrups, swung a leg over the saddle so that he was balanced on one side of the main wheel, tried to keep the wildly vibrating handlebars steady with a single hand, and reached across with the other to grasp Detective Inspector Trounce's shoulder. Then, in one quick motion, he leaned over, put his foot on one of the mounting bars of Trounce's machine, and stepped across. His own bone shaker rattled on, kept on right, upright by its gyroscope. However, without his fingers holding the velocity valve open, it immediately slowed and started to fall to the rear. Burton drew his pistol. He had three shots left. He looked back. The wolfmen were screaming around the right of his philosophy. Burton raised his gun, took aim, breathed gently, and squeezed the trigger. The bullet hit the pinning farthing's furnace. With a startlingly loud detonation, it exploded, blasting red-hot metal into the loop gurus charging along beside it. As the twisted vehicle somersaulted in the air, one of the beasts burst into flames. Then a second, and a third, one by one, they erupted and fell writhing to the ground, burning fiercely. The carriage fell away behind the three men. However, four of the gurus remained in pursuit, snapping at the small back wheels of the vehicles. Confound it, my pistol is jammed, shouted Burton. Trounce passed his colt over his shoulder to Swinburne. Here you are, lad. I'll steer and you shoot. Terrific, the poet grinned happily. <laughs> he took aim, started firing, and missed with his first three shots. By Jove, announced Trounce, it takes a rare talent to avoid hitting the blighters at this range. <laughs> Swinburne's fourth bullet found its mark, and with a blinding flash, one of the werewolves spontaneously combusted, setting fire to the beasts on either side of it. They fell back, screaming in agony as they died. Swinburne cheered. The penny farthing jolted. He dropped the pistol. <laughs> Curse it. Sorry, Trounce, old man. I hope that didn't have any sentimental value. <laughs> Only in so far as it could save us from being eaten alive, you blockhead, replied the police detective. <laughs>